People have become interested in spirituality or incorporated spiritual practice in their life for a number of different reasons. Some people grew up in, in religious or spiritual families, and, and so they've just maintained customs that they've grown up with and different practices. Some people have had friends who went to yoga or meditation groups, and those friends shared with them something about what was happening, and, and that got them interested. Uh, some people have read things online and felt like something was missing or that they wanted a better way to deal with stress or something like that. And so they've sought out information about spirituality and spiritual practice on their own. And for some, uh, they've had mental health uh, practitioners or, or therapists, doctors, uh, nurse practitioners who suggested to them that they incorporate something like meditation or breathing exercises to help with their treatment. Uh, there's a lot of research in terms of how meditation and other practices really support our health and well-being. And I talk about that in another video called Meditation in a Healthier Mind and Body. But all of these reasons bring people to a place where they're interested in spirituality, they want to learn more about spiritual practice, and are trying to understand what that means and what the progression will be like for them. So today I want to talk some about spirituality, spiritual practice, and what that means in terms of our soul, our spirit, that inner light within us, what, whatever words you describe that inner part of ourselves. Now, many spiritual teachers and religious leaders talk in terms of transformation. Now, I've used the term transformation and have used it particularly in my writing in the past. But as time has gone on, I have felt more uncomfortable with the idea of transformation. It conjures up for me images of those Transformer movies where the trucks become the superheroes. To transform, in my mind, sounds like one thing is becoming another. Now, maybe you're like me, but I'm not wanting to become a different person, another person. I pretty much like the basic person that I am. I have some rough edges. There are ways I still need to grow. I'm not done uh, with becoming the person I need to be, but I'm pretty glad that I'm the person that I am. So I'm not looking at transforming into something else. So as I've reflected on this, I've thought that the language that I really feel most comfortable with around spirituality is to talk about growth and evolution. And, and they're a little bit different from each other for me. Spiritual growth, in my mind, well, we all know about growing. We've all grown. We were born as infants and we grew up. We were nurtured properly, cared for, and that kicked in the normal processes for us to grow. We may not have always recognized our growth. For instance, in some families, they mark uh, how high children grow, how tall children grow, on, on a doorpost or the wall, so that you can see from year to year what growth looks like physically. You know, some of us get an idea of our growth when we look back on our life. For instance, when I think back on my adolescence and what emotions were like for me, you know, as an adolescent, as I was first really experiencing the neurochemicals related to emotions, I totalized on everything. And I'm really glad that in time that sort of evened out and that as an adult, I'm better able to manage my emotions and most of us are, uh, but that's all part of growth. Growth happens in a natural way. It's a natural process that occurs for us. Similarly, as we do spiritual practice, as we engage on a regular basis, we will experience growth in our life and growth in particular ways. Evolution is a little bit different. Evolution is change that occurs out of adaptation. When we experience different things, new things, we adapt, we make changes. One example I have in terms of personal adaptation has to do with my writing. I've published eight books. My first book I wrote in the early 1980s. At that point, 
Writing a book for me was sitting down with a pad and a pen and literally writing the book. So I would write, you know, and you see people tear up pages in, in you know, TV shows and, and movies. Well, that was me. So that I would write a page and adjust it and sometimes tear it up and ball it and throw it away. And eventually I had a book. And once I had that book handwritten, I then sat down at a typewriter and typed the thing out and sent that to the publisher. And the editor and I sent it back and forth by mail. Working on that transcript, we'd use whiteout, for those of you who remember whiteout, and make notations in different colored ink on the margins. And eventually we had a polished manuscript that needed to be retyped. So that was writing a book for me in the early 1980s. Today, there's hardly anything that I write that I don't do on an electronic device. I've had new experiences. I adapted and evolved because of those experiences. And spirituality and spiritual practice are a lot like that. So I'm going to talk about growth and evolution and spiritual practice and some of what that does for us at a soul or spiritual level and how that infuses our life with a certain kind of energy. And as I do that, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel, to click the bell, and to stay tuned for more exploration of growth and evolution and spiritual practice. One of the things that people notice when they begin a spiritual practice that's right for them is that during that time of spiritual practice, they experience a sense of peace. They find that the stress of their day sort of fades away. They're not aware of the concerns that they have, and they enter into a quiet space where all is at peace for them. This is true whether you're doing meditation or walking a labyrinth, praying a rosary, or, or doing any other traditional spiritual practice. The thing is about the peace associated with the spiritual practice is that when you walk away from doing the spiritual practice, when you get back to your life, all of the concerns and the worries and the everything else that's going on continues to be with you. And you end up looking at that time in spiritual practice as sort of an oasis. That's not a bad thing. It's just that that's sort of the beginning time for you, the beginning phase. What happens for someone who engages regularly in spiritual practice if you begin spending 10, 15 minutes, three, four, five times a week, you find that over time, that peace begins to fill your life gradually more and more so that you finish that spiritual practice, the actual practice itself. You've experienced that peace, but you take that peace with you and it begins to fill your life more and more. People will begin to notice that and you'll begin to notice that whenever you begin to live in a more content way. And that contentment is sort of the next level of growth after the initial peace. Contentment comes for us as we have done enough practice that we've begun to really incorporate that practice in our life and that the peace begins to really fill us in a way that, that we have a sense of wholeness in ourselves that there's a completeness in ourself. Yeah, there are still lots of problems in the world. No, we're not perfect people. Uh, yes, there are things we still need to deal with and, and there'll be difficulties that confront us, but we carry within us this sense of contentment that sustains us. And that's really part of the growth and the evolution that we experience. Now, I don't want to suggest that this happens all at once or it happens for everything. There are things that are likely to sort of prick at you and pull at you for a very long time. For example, one of the things that has disturbed me, me of peace and shattered my contentment on more than one occasion is driving a car in the city. I live in Atlanta. There's lots of traffic as there are in many cities. And I know inevitably something's going to happen. And so I get agitated and sort of outside of myself sometimes when I'm driving. 
But I've learned that as I get into a car, one of the things I need to say to myself is, I know something's going to happen. Somebody's going to do something that's going to look crazy to me. And I just need to allow it to happen. And when I do that, when I'm conscious of that as I begin, then as I'm driving down a freeway and somebody from the left lane crosses five lanes of traffic to take the right-hand exit all at once, I can just take a deep, deep breath and relax and remain at peace. So for me, driving has always been one of those things where I've had trouble maintaining peace and contentment. Other areas of my life, that's, that's really a solid thing for me. My point in saying that is we all will have growing edges with this. How long does it take for us to experience that contentment? It will really depend on each of us. It's a growing process. Part of the way you can continue that growth is to work with a spiritual director. And in my video, Your Spiritual Direction, I talk about what that's like. But one of the wonderful things that, that, that comes with spiritual practice and the nurturing of the spiritual dimension of our life is initially that peace that begins to, to pervade throughout our life and grow to a sense of contentment where we value the life we have and the experiences we have moment by moment and know that each moment is really a gift. That's the heart of contentment. A few years ago, a book was published. It was a collection of conversations between His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of Tibetan Buddhists, and Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the retired head of the Anglican Church in South Africa. In this book, called The Book of Joy, they shared about their own spiritual practice and sense of spirituality and their experience of joy, joy that has been deeply rooted in their life. Now, there are some things that I want you to be aware of as I talk about this experience of joy and a little bit about these two men. Remember that both of them, while they're both viewed as spiritual teachers, they are very clearly religious leaders. They have very clear positions as heads within their religion. So I, I want to raise that because their practice is so very different one from the other. Yet despite the differences they have, they still have a very similar experience of where the spiritual practices they do and the way their traditional outlook, how that has led them and drawn them through life to experience joy in life. Secondly, both of these men have experienced great hardship in life. They face things that few of us ever will. Yet, despite the hardships they've experienced, as these men continue their lives, they find that their lives are characterized by a sense of joy. Now, where does that joy come from? Joy is something that happens for us along the way. It happens for us as we are learning our spiritual practice, as we are engaging further and further. Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh has very wisely said that happiness is not the destination, it's the journey. Our happiness, our joy, is about our own choice. It's about what we focus on. And we learn to do that through spiritual practice. Just as initially when we engage in spiritual practice, we find that that experience is marked by peace. So too, that in those initial experiences are marked by an experience of happiness. Now by happiness, I don't mean you know, funny or giddy or, you know, out of ourselves, but something very pleasing within us, that that's the root of happiness. And as we live our life based out of our spiritual practice, we find that that happiness grows and it evolves to the experience of joy. In another video entitled Spirituality as Part of Us, 
I talk about a study that I did several years ago among people who described their lives as spiritual. They valued spirituality and they had spirituality and spiritual practice as a central part of their life. And one of the things they all described was this sense of joy and happiness. And they described it in very similar terms, uh, but that how over time, those initial feelings of being happy as they did practice or coming out of practice grew to be a pervasive sense throughout their life and that they would describe their lives as joy filled. Not that everything was easy, not that everything was smooth, but that there was a joy to living. They looked forward to the next day. They looked forward to the next experience they would have. They trusted that there would be goodness in life. And I think that's very important for us to consider that part of, of the change, the growth, uh, the evolution that happens within us at a heart level, at a soul level, deep within us, as we engage in spiritual practice over time, is there's a transition where we become people who are more content and people who are filled with joy and who live in a joyful way. Again, this doesn't happen overnight. This comes with time in practice. And for some of us, years of practice. Remember that it's called practice because we keep doing it until we get it right. And really, we never fully get it right. We're still learning. One of my favorite writers, Teresa of Avila, the Spanish mystic, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase her, but, but she said that it's important for us to remember that no matter how far you are on the spiritual journey, we begin each day again as a beginner. Each day, each of us begins with our spiritual practice, and we allow, allow that practice to cause our growth and our evolution, to make us more whole and complete people, marked with contentment and living in joy. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and please make some comments and share some of your experiences of peace and contentment and happiness and joy, and how that's been attached and related to your spiritual practice and spiritual life. Thanks for being here today. I really appreciate your time.